Hi, I'm Alex here at Tailscale. In today's video, we're going to get started with Tailscale in 10 minutes or less. We'll cover the basics of SSH, DNS, and what an exit node is. I'll also show you how to access Nextcloud running on a cloud server privately just on your tailnet. So if you've been curious about how to get started with Tailscale, then this is the video for you. Okay, let's add our first device to our tailnet. I'm going to do my phone first of all. We're going to go through this in real time. So uh, I've just downloaded the Tailscale app from the iOS App Store. I'm going to go ahead and get myself logged in. There is a little wizard that goes hit through here and explains a few things for you about the privacy implications, some of the notification permissions that we ask for. But most importantly is this little VPN configurations tab that opens right here. So you're going to need to go ahead and get, uh, get that wizard out of the way. Once that's done, Tailscale is going to ask you to log in using one of the identity providers that we support. So you can see from the list here that we support Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Apple, and Passkeys. Now the one I'm going to use today is GitHub, but it doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to go ahead and um, authorize Tailscale to get logged in using GitHub. Then I'm going to select the tailnet that's assigned to that specific user in GitHub. For me, this is the ironic badger.github tailnet. And then you can see that I've got my first device added to my tailnet. Now, this is going to reflect almost in real time in the admin dashboard over on tailscale.com. And the iPhone 15 is there right away. Now, the next thing we might want to go ahead and do is add a laptop, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged in. I'm going to click the login button. It's going to take me straight to a Tailscale login page. Again, I'm going to use the GitHub identity provider to do this. I'm going to authorize Tailscale. And once that's done, it's going to ask me to select the tailnet. Again, I'm going to select ironicbadger.github. It's the same thing as I did on my phone. Now, the login was successful. And you'll see that almost right away, uh, if I go and visit the admin console again underneath, that my laptop is now there for us to see. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I think it's going to make our life easier if I just call this laptop. Now, we've got two devices on our tailnet. Let's add a third. Let's go ahead and add my desktop. You should be getting the hang of this by now, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about how we add a specific computer. But again, just to make things easy, I'm going to go ahead and just rename this one to desktop. Now, finally, I'm going to go ahead and add a cloud server. This cloud server is running Nextcloud. You can see here I'm having to use the public IP address of this server to access my Nextcloud at the moment. What I'd really like is for this to be behind a real DNS name and not have to remember IPs. So what I need to do is go and get myself SSH'd into that server. Luckily for you, I have this prepared from earlier. And do a tail scale up. What this is going to do is it's going to present me a login URL. I'm going to command click on this. And again, it's going to take me to the authentication page to connect a device. This is a Linux server, by the way, running in the cloud. Um, this could just as easily be a Raspberry Pi or some kind of always on system like a Synology NAS maybe, or an Unraid box, or a Linux box, or any of the other plethora of operating systems that Tailscale supports, we could use to do this exact uh, situation just here. So you can see we've got four nodes now in the Tailnet. We've got a cloud server, we've got a desktop, we've got my iPhone, and we've got my laptop. Now what's particularly interesting about all of these different things is if I go ahead and turn the Wi-Fi off on my phone, Typically, it wouldn't be possible for me to reach any of these other devices when I'm outside of my house. So pretend I'm sat on the bus or the train or something, and I want to reach my desktop for whatever reason. I can open up a client here and type ping desktop. And over tail scale, over 5G, my phone with no other configuration than installing the apps and in the time it took for you to watch this video, I'm able to connect my phone to my desktop. But wouldn't it be even cooler if I could just go into the Tailscale app, for example, and look at this cloud server that's here, and then paste that into my Safari browser on my phone. Now you'll see right away that this is actually able to access the next cloud running on a cloud virtual server from my phone over 5G with no other configuration required using the DNS name that comes as part of the Tailnet um, configuration. Now one of the really nice things about devices on a Tailnet is each device gets its own private IP address that starts in the 100 range. This is a reserved block of IP addresses that isn't publicly routable across the internet, but is unique to you and your devices on your tailnet. Magic DNS also means that each node on your tailnet, you can actually start to refer to different things by name alone. 
And this starts to get incredibly powerful when we start trying to do things like SSH. So if I do tail scale set, for example, I can do tail scale set, I think it's dash dash SSH. Now this is gonna put a little SSH button over here in the corner on my admin dashboard. And what this will allow me to do is with no other configuration, I'm gonna go back to my phone again because this is just proof that there's no SSH keys or anything like that being used here. I can do SSH root at cloud hyphen, if I can type, hyphen server. Do you want to trust the host key? Yes, I do. And connected. And just like that, using Tailscale, I have set up a, a server in the cloud. I've connected my connected to it using SSH from my phone. I've also hosted a private Nextcloud instance, uh, which is just accessible for me on my tailnet. So what we've done here is we've created four nodes on a flat network across the internet. Remember, my phone's on 5G. The cloud server is in the cloud anywhere else in the world. My desktop is in my house here and my laptop is with me probably at the coffee shop or something like that. Now, another cool thing that we can do is go ahead and actually configure an exit node. So what I wanna do now is do a dash dash advertise exit node. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to route traffic from my phone out through that cloud virtual private server as if I'm sat at the keyboard of that data center in Virginia or San Francisco or Germany or wherever it might be. Now back here in the Tailscale admin dashboard, you'll see there's a now a, a new exit node option. This machine is requesting to be used as an exit node. Now we need to go into this section over here, click on edit root settings, and just check this box here that says use as exit node. So what I can do is back on my phone, I can go over here back to the Tailscale app. And under the top section here, there is an option that says exit node, choose exit node. So if I click on cloud server and go back to Safari, I can do uh, was it ipchicken.com. So this is now gonna show me the same IP address, 64.225, as remember I was using at the beginning. So this is proving to me that I'm now sending all of the traffic from my phone out across the internet through a private encrypted tunnel secured by WireGuard underneath using Tailscale and having it come out in that remote data center. But a more typical use case might be something like wanting to leave a box at a friend's house or a parent's house or something like that. We recently added support for Apple TV, so you can actually use your Apple TV as an exit node as well a super low power device that is always on and enables you to send your traffic as if you're coming out at a different location. Another common use case might be to set up your desktop computer as an exit node. So let me just go ahead and show you how to do that on macOS real quick. So in the macOS client here, there's an exit node option. And if I click on cloud server, this is gonna um, send my traffic out through the cloud server. That's not what I want in this situation. I'm gonna click on the button that says run exit node. That permits me to use this device, in my case, this is a desktop running in my house, as an exit node. So if I'm at the coffee shop or something like that and I'm trying to do online banking or something that's a little more sensitive to my physical location, it allows me to send that traffic out over the public internet again through that encrypted WireGuard tunnel backed by all of the tail scale magic and pretend that I'm actually in my house. And you can see once again that I just need to go ahead in the Tailscale admin console and just select use as exit node. In real time, on my phone appears my desktop as an option to route my traffic out from my phone, again through the encrypted WireGuard tunnel, and pretend that I'm in my house. This is super useful for accessing things like home automation, as well as a whole bunch of self-hosted services that I run in my basement. And so that was a very quick tour of everything you can do with Tailscale in just a few minutes. Maybe you'll consider leaving an Apple TV under the tree this Christmas at a friend or a relative's house and ask them if you can use it as an exit node. Let us know how you're using Tailscale down in the comments below. And until next time, I've been Alex from Tailscale.